Hey, what up? So, um, I think the age old discussion, you know, tech debt, right? Um, you know, in the, in the long time I've been doing this now, I've worked on many different projects uh, with many different leads and, you know, scopes and missions and all that and different technology stacks. Essentially, uh, I feel like I've seen a lot. Um, but when I saw, like, when we talk about technical debt, I mean, for anybody that doesn't know, it means like basically where your requirements are not straight uh, or your deadlines are too tight. Um, sometimes you just have to slam stuff in to get it to work because the business cares much more about deadlines and getting things done and new features than they do perfect code. So anyway, I'm always of the opinion that when you work for the business, you try to appease the business. And in that process though, um, there's usually a lot of arguments or disagreements about how things should be done. And I totally get it, but I guess I've worked on way too many projects that were just simply scrapped or replaced or not really used. Um, and then some, you know, stick around for a long time, but even those, you know, that become legacy is, uh, you know, sometimes, yeah, it's in use, but nobody's even working on it because it simply works and the feature is already delivered and there's no reason to iterate, uh, or build upon it and all that. Uh, the reason why tech debt is a problem, though, is when you make these edge case decisions of like, okay, we have to just get this done. Uh, we can put something on our backlog to address whatever sort of hack or workaround we did and try to make this better in the future. And going back to my first point, that is never really the case because what ends up happening is the business cares about deadlines and new features and therefore the backlog uh, the nice to haves, the technical debt and all that, that doesn't get worked on. So eventually it sits on the backlog for a couple of years until everybody leaves the team to the point where nobody even knows why that's on the backlog anymore, or it becomes so antiquated, like it doesn't matter anymore, you know, because of some new feature, uh, or a change in the company direction and all that. So the, the point of this video is like, um, you know, I believe in, you know, in, in, in writing the best code possible, maintainable code, unit tested code, integration tests, uh, end to end tests. I believe in all that. Um, but I think I've seen too many projects either, you know, not make deadlines because of trying to write perfect code or creating such a complicated verbose process of you know check-ins or just simply making modifications to the code that it becomes you know basically a big roadblock of getting things done so i've seen projects get way complicated and they could be 100 percent unit tested you know very specific way of doing everything led by the tech leads and such um but i've also seen that move at a snail's pace so my big thing is like, yeah, it's great to have nice code and, uh, and perfect code if you can, but there's no such thing as perfect code. That's the bottom line. There is no such thing as perfect code. There might be perfect code for one person's opinion, but that doesn't mean that everybody's going to agree with that. And most likely nobody will. Um, and it's, you know, it kind of is like agile, basically every, you know, the one truth to agile is that no matter who you talk to, uh, they'll say that you're not doing agile, right? You know, there's always somebody's opinion of how agile is done, right? But it's, you know, it's not black and white. There's a lot of shades of gray, just like everything we do in programming. Uh, and now you're going to have that to the extreme because of chat GPT. Like, so people are going to write just the sloppiest code. They already are because of those deadlines and chat GPT is spinning out, you know, all this code and it happens to work, but it's copying and pasting stack overflow to the extreme. And we're gonna have much, uh, you know, much larger backlogs of tech debt and all that. So, if we're not careful to address tech debt, you know, it's never going to get done. And I think it's gonna be much more of a problem going into the future as we have all this 
automated generated code. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Maybe, you know, one day AI will be so smart it can actually figure out your backlog and your tech debt and work on that, but most likely not anytime soon. And, um, you know, last thing I'll say is that, you know, I once worked on this one project for over a year and, um, you know, it was like 80 developers on it. And by the time we went to release it, like, uh, you know, there was all these bugs and all these problems. And then there was a change of management and literally the whole project got scrapped. And, um, you know, and that's fine. But I just remember there was a lot of weekends. There was a lot of evening hours put into that. And there was a lot of hard feelings from a lot of people that put in that work to just have their work thrown away. And that's just the reality of the industry that we're in. Um, because again, even if, uh, even if that code does go in there, it's only going to be a matter of time before it's replaced by something else, some other vision, some other product. And the bottom line with business is you really, especially in these markets, you can't afford to spend a bunch of money, uh, in hopes that something's going to work out. So in, in business, like most things, like, you know, nine times out of 10, whatever it is you're working on isn't going to work. Uh, and, and it's not going to work in the sense like there's not a market to pay money for it, or it's not going to be profitable uh, or this and that, you know, there's all kinds of different reasons why things don't work. And you have this research and development and a lot of companies like Google and Facebook and or Meta or whatever can afford to pay that kind of thing and better markets, but most smaller companies can't. So again, you know, getting your product to market as quickly as possible is extremely important to figure out whether or not there's even any traction. And if there is, then yes, iterate, work on that tech debt, you know, but if it's working, working is better than working is better than good. Uh, and good is better than perfect in most cases. So curious what your thoughts are, but you know, I've, uh, I'll, I'll try to write perfect code for as long as I'm in this industry. Uh, I appreciate everybody's effort to write perfect code, but honestly, I just don't think it exists.